we manage to encrypt a uh, text in an image and, by, and uh, then decrypt it. Hello and welcome to day four. It's Thursday and we are deep into cryptography. Very interesting topic. Some of it is quite confusing. Thank God I have the foundations that the foundations in cybersecurity has provided me. If you didn't see my vlogs, I will leave them over here and also in the description when I was studying that course. But thank God I have that foundation because for example, when we started talking about XOR, I just had a flashback to how confused I was when I first learned about the concept and now I understand more about it. So thank God I have that foundation. It's really helping me. We just learned the, and I might be mispronouncing it, Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. And it's super interesting. Also, I'm loving the interaction that is happening in the Slack channel. I now have some friends essentially in there that we've DM'd, well, Slacked, directly Slacked each other. Is that a word? I, I don't know, but it's really fun. And it really feels like I'm in a classroom with these people. I'm in a virtual classroom with these people. I feel like right now with a pandemic, it's as close as it gets to an in-person interaction. And there are people from all over the country and maybe even all over the world if they are you know, tr doing it in a different time zone that works for them. The instructor is actively participating in the chat, not necessarily typing, but, you know, interacting with us live, uh, responding to our comments and asking us questions, making us guess things before he tells us what it is. It's very interactive. Okay, so we see some people, several of you have sent digital signatures. I love this format. It's, it's very nice. And the fact that it has breaks and it has a schedule is very good for someone who is pretty disorganized like me in terms of my own schedule. It's very hard to follow a, like a disciplined schedule and take breaks and this makes you do that, which is wonderful. So this video, video number three, is going to cover days four, five, and six. So we'll go into Saturday. And because you've already seen my daily routine, I'm not going to walk you through the, you know, all of that again because it's going to be very repetitive. However, watch this video till the end because I'm taking notes on some of my thoughts and tips around how to optimize your online learning process in terms of things like snacks and, you know, just daily routine and how to prepare for a boot camp day, you know, intensive studying, how to make the information stick. And finally, I will give you some tips on the exam preparation, which the instructor has shared already. And also some of my, my own experience from the previous SANS exam for a GX certification. So stay tuned. Let's get back to studying. The break is almost over. Whew, and that's a wrap of day four. I'm pretty tired because it's been a long day <laughs> and there's been a lot of information. I really liked how Brian Simon put it, buffer overflow. There's definitely been a buffer overflow in my head today, but the engagement with the fellow students has been very nice. Like I said, I'm making friends there and it feels like I'm networking with people who are going to be in the same field. And it's pretty cool because I'm getting to know some of the people's stories. One person in particular is taking this time to level up at their current job, which is awesome. And honestly, this, these are the skills, these are the things that they can start applying next week so we finish this course on saturday on monday when they come back to work they can start implementing these things and they can go for a promotion or whatever they are aiming for and i hope their employer is covering this course because i'm sure a lot of employers would cover this as a level up for their employees but seriously this this stuff can be applied the next week and i'm sure this person in particular not going to mention their name because privacy but this person in particular is going to go back and get that promotion or simply they're going to have more hands-on skills that they've learned today and honestly these labs are so hands-on today oh, I love this today we were talking about cryptography and steganography and we managed to encrypt uh, text in an image and by and uh, then decrypt it 
and also an image within an image. And I know it's possible to encrypt files within um, like text files within audio files or audio files within text files because I learned that during the foundations course. But today I actually got to do it myself, which was really cool, really fun. Here's my image of a dog that has an image of a cat in it. Here's the original. Here's the cat dog picture. You can't tell the difference, right? It's just, but it, the file is there. You can, and you can't, the funniest thing, <laughs> nerding out here, the craziest thing is that you can't even detect it because of the file size. It's all the same. So yeah, we were learning all about that and authentication today, a lot of really good hands-on stuff. And again, the labs are just making it super real and super hands-on, something that, you know, I have experience with these tools now. I can go and apply that. In fact, I really want to play around with a steganography tool now because that's kind of fun. Finally, one more thing that I wanted to mention is that the recordings on the portal, on the SANS portal, are going to be available for four months. So if you are preparing for an exam and you're worried about missing some of the live content, you will have access to recordings for another four months. So don't worry. And I will give you more tips on the exam preparation at the end of the video, so stay tuned. All right, I'm gonna go unplug and I will see you tomorrow, bright and early. For day number five, what are we studying? Windows and Azure security. This one's pretty heavy. Welcome to day five of the boot camp. The day started bright and early as usual, and we are talking about Windows and Azure security. It's a huge book that we're doing today because there's a lot, and you know, Windows is one of the most used operating system systems in the world, so there's a whole day dedicated to it. Nothing unusual today, everything is going according to schedule. So let's just skip this vlog to tomorrow and see if I have any new findings then and skip to those tips. And just like that, we have finished day six. This course was definitely intense, but so much practical information. It's awesome. Today was shorter uh, because we didn't have any labs because they wanted to make it a shorter day because it's a Saturday. So we finished two hours earlier than normal. Honestly, I my understanding of cybersecurity has definitely jumped a level up and I feel like not only do I have the foundation, but I also have the practical skills that I can start applying. And I'm sure a lot of the students, my fellow students in the course, are going to apply these skills almost immediately at their job on Monday, which is wonderful. Some of the tips that I wanted to share is, well, let's start with snacks and beverages. Make sure that you have healthy snacks laying around. And by healthy snacks, I mean there's no added sugar and natural non-processed foods. So for me, that was nuts. I ate a lot of dates whenever I wanted something sweet, fruit. And I made sure that all of my other meals were, you know, pretty wholesome just because I wanted to avoid those spikes of energy and just big declines all of a sudden and crashing. That's the word I was looking for. So making sure that you're eating good foods so that you're getting all the nutrition you need will help you stay more alert throughout the day. Beverages. Water is your best friend. You gotta hydrate, of course. I did my best to stick to one cup of coffee a day and then I made myself green tea and drank green tea, but I also have a cutoff time. Around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink caffeine after that because I know it will impact my sleep and sleep is essential because you want to make sure that you're alert. Your body is a machine that needs to be nurtured in order to stay alert, productive, to continue performing and continue absorbing information. So that is key, like making sure that you have the, those meals ready and all that stuff. And speaking of meals, meal prepping is big. Whenever we cook big meals, we just freeze some of it and, you know, having those frozen leftovers, that frozen food that we can just use as meals was super helpful because sometimes 
I mean, I didn't have time to cook dinner and my husband didn't have time to cook dinner. So, you know, this was super helpful. Getting proper sleep, of course, is very important and disconnecting at the end of the day because you want to make sure that you're not overwhelming yourself and you are able, you have the energy and the clarity to continue the next day. In terms of making the information stick in your head more, the labs were super helpful because they helped you take the theory that you just learned and apply it in real life. And taking those breaks that are provided, that is crucial because you can't be alert and just continue being focused for the entire day. You have to take those breaks. Finally, my runs during lunchtime have been so helpful. There was one day when I didn't work out at all and I didn't go outside and it was very hard to focus in the second part of the day. And maybe that's just me, but I highly recommend, you know, moving your body, even if it's just going for a walk. Like today was too cold. So I went for a walk, too cold to run outside. So I went for a walk outside and then I did a little run on the treadmill. So I combined those two, but just changing your environment and just getting some steps in, not sitting down at all times, so helpful. And finally, talk to other fellow students. I found it so helpful to be part of that community, part of that classroom. It really kept me going because I felt like I'm not alone here, you know, looking at my screen and listening to these lectures. There is a community who is doing it with me and that has been so helpful. And, you know, just making friends with those people who are going through the same experience, who have different resources or things to recommend you and just, you know, network for the future. You never know where life may take you. Maybe you will work with these people in the later future date. And now the tips that you've been waiting for for exam preparation. So according to the instructor, the exam used to be 180 questions and take five hours. And now it is 106 questions. Yes, 106 and takes four hours. The minimum pass score is 73%. And once you purchase it, you have four months to take the exam. The exam follows a similar structure like the exam that I took for the GFACT certification, which you can watch that video in the description or using the link over here, but it is proctored by Pearson View or Proctor U. The questions are multiple choice and you get a 15 minute break um, that you can take learn more about that process using that other video that I created, link is in the description and up here. And there are two practice exams that I absolutely recommend for anyone to take because it helps you get from, it helps you familiarize yourself, helps you get familiar with the process, it's been a long week, uh, helps you get familiar with the process of the exam, with the flow, with how it works, so that you're not worried about what to expect and also get some practice in how you are handling your notes during the exam. Apparently, according to the instructor, 10 to 15 questions are going to be in the cyber live format, which basically, are simulations of actual programs that you know you need to be able to use with you know the the program interface virtual machines or actual code so simulations of that that you will need to answer as a multiple choice question so basically there's a simulation and there's a question and you just pick the option this exam is also open book but only hard copies of your notes are allowed so if you have any notes that you typed up virtually, you gotta print them out. But these babies are gonna be super helpful. I would just recommend indexing them. Again, watch that other video so that you understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, these are super helpful for that. The exam is based on these seven books. Yes, including the workbook. So the instructor recommended taking eight weeks because you have four months, so you have plenty of times. He recommended taking eight weeks to go through uh, all of the materials and he recommended, you know, one week per book, uh, reading them front and back and then you have, because you have seven books, you have just one extra week to study in case if you are behind on anything. And I specifically asked about the references because a lot of these books and slides within them have references. References are not 
testable. It's all, everything that you're going to be tested on is in here, not in the recordings that you will have in the portal of the lectures. You don't have to worry about those stories, anything else that is not present written in these books. If you have any other questions, let me know under the video because I will do a Q&A with an instructor of this course, potentially the course creator, Brian Simon. So let me know if you have any other questions about the course, about the exam, about anything. And I am very excited to do that Q&A. Thank you for joining me throughout this journey. It's been really fun. And yes, my head hurts a little bit, but it's a good kind of hurt. Sans, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to dive deeper into cybersecurity. It is such a cool and dynamic field, and I'm so excited to see so many students diving into it further and getting this, getting to this next level. And a lot of them will get this certification, the GX Security Essentials, which is the certification that you get if you pass, if you're successful with the exam. Oh, I forgot to mention, there are plenty of women in my student cohort, so I was very happy to see that. All right, I will go and plug. I will see you in the summary video and in that Q&A. So let me know if you have any questions by commenting them below. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful time today you're currently experiencing. Bye.